Hello everyone. Today we're going to do a banjo lesson and we're going to be focusing on bluegrass banjo backup and primarily in the first position. And so what I mean by the first position is just playing open or down the neck. And we're going to go through some roll patterns in G, C, and D. That would be the one, four, and five chords. And then I'm also going to give you some similar, I mean, it's the same pattern, but we're going to apply it in the key of C. So that would be C, F, and G and also in the key of D. So that would be D, G, and A. So stay tuned, here's the lesson. The basic idea of this lesson, and it's an idea that I wish I would have learned much sooner when I was playing bluegrass banjo, is that roll patterns are often best learned in two measure patterns. So when you're first learning the banjo, the, the first thing that is often taught is the forward roll. And a forward roll would include, would sound something like this. Okay, that's one measure of a forward roll, and I'm just playing the, uh, I'm beginning with the G string, going up to the D string, and then I'm hitting the fifth string, and then I'm continuing the forward roll. Now the problem with the forward roll is that you have one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. So it doesn't line up very well with a one measure pattern. Now these are indispensable roles to learn. We should all learn the forward roll, the backwards roll, the mixed roll, all right? And most of the, the people watching this video probably all know that. But what I'm going to tell you about is how can you put these patterns to use in typical bluegrass songs? And I've found that playing these patterns over two measures is actually much more helpful and more useful. So let's take a song like Blue Ridge Cabin Home, for instance. Uh, that song goes, it's two measures of G, two measures of C, and two measures of D. Or we could say two measures of the one chord, two measures of the four chord, two measures of the five chord. And, but how would we do those rolls? Would we do one measure like this? And simply repeat that one measure pattern? Or, could we do a two measure pattern and then keep repeating that two measure pattern? And I've found that this latter idea is much more helpful and, and I don't take credit for it either. I, I learned this, uh, AccuTab had a great series of DVDs uh, called Power Picking and they had one on down the neck, bluegrass banjo, and they introduced this idea of playing these roll patterns in two measure patterns and very helpful. So what would a two measure pattern look like? Uh, well, here's the way that I typically do it, all right? So first I'm just going to play it over two measures, and then I'll explain it. Okay, so that was two measures, and it was a basic forward roll, again, over those same strings. I'm not playing the B string here. I'm not playing the low D. I'm just playing the outside strings and that middle G string, so... Okay, so I'm beginning with my thumb on the G string, and then I use my, my um, middle finger on the top string, the high D, and then we begin the forward roll pattern across those three strings. Okay, so we start with that G to D, and then we begin the forward roll. And it's actually four forward rolls in a row. And then after you've completed that last forward roll, there's kind of what, what might be called an exit roll, where we're exiting out of the forward roll so that we can get our thumb back in position to strike the first note of the next two measure pattern. Okay, so here, one more time, I'm gonna play it through. Okay, now the beauty of this is it's a two measure pattern. And so a lot of bluegrass songs will stay in a chord for two measures. And this gives you a two measure pattern that you can play. And many songs such as Blue Ridge Cabin Home then will go into another two measure pattern. Uh, change the chord and we can use that same roll but now apply it into a different chord. 
So in Blue Ridge Cabin Home, it would if I played that same role over G, C, and D, it would sound like this. Okay, so that was the same roll pattern. I didn't have to do anything different. I played that same roll pattern and I was able to just then apply my left hand. Now the one thing, I did do one thing different, and that is when you change the chord to the C chord, you're no longer going to play that middle G, that open G, you're going to play the C. And you're gonna, I, I use my thumb for that, but so we play. Once I got to the C chord, I'm now playing the C note, the E note, this is part of the C, right? So the, the second string at the top there, then the top string, and then the fifth string down at the bottom. So second string, first string, fifth string, that becomes my roll pattern. And then you could either return to G after those two measures, uh, if that's what you were doing in the song is going back to a G, or in this song, in Blue Ridge Cabin Home, you go to the five chord. So you simply go from the C. Whoops, I missed it. And you'll notice that the D the D chord is an identical roll to the G. It's just that we finger down. All we have to do is put one finger down, uh, the index finger on the second fret, so you're playing an A note. And we can apply that roll, that two measure roll pattern across G, C, and D. Now, what if we were playing in a different key? And I, I highly encourage you to learn your banjo rolls particularly in the keys of G, C, and D. If you learn those three different keys, using the capo, you can basically play any, any song in any key. So a lot of times it's a good practice to learn songs in both the key of G, the key of C, and the key of D, because you never know where the vocalist might want to sing the song. But if we do this now in the key of C, we start on the key of, in, uh, with a C chord, So there, that was C, C, F, then open G, and then back to C. But it was the same pattern. So for the C chord, again, we already explained this when we were in the key of G, we're playing on the second string, first string, and then we play that four forward rolls again, one exit roll, and then we're back to the beginning. But instead of staying in C after two measures, we can easily just put our pinky down on our, put our pinky down on the first string there on the D string, and now we're in an F. And then of course we just release our left hand to go to G. Okay, so that was the key of C. Now let's do it in the key of D. Okay, so applying those roll patterns in the key of D, I've now capoed, or I've, uh, I've inserted my fifth string into the spike at the second fret, so it's now tuned to A. And for that D chord, and now we can play an open roll D chord, two measure pattern. So that was the same two measure pattern played across D, then two measures of G, then two measures of A. And for that A chord, I was playing my middle finger on the second fret of the G string and my ring finger on the second fret of the D string. And that sounded like this. Whoops, and then I went back to a G note there. But um, what I would say is, 
this two measure pattern is extremely helpful and useful. There are other variations of this pattern and I encourage you to explore them. Uh, one of the ones that I typically do is I will not always do that straightforward roll, but I'll do a forward roll into a forward reverse roll. So it starts, the first measure sounds the same, but the second measure you'll hear uh, after that next forward roll, it'll turn into a reverse roll. So that would sound like this, a two measure open G. All right, one more time. It's just slightly different at the end. Listen for that reverse roll. All right, I'll play it one more time slower. Okay, the other thing that can be done with these rolls is obviously I don't play them straight, the same, open, without any embellishments. I usually add little embellishments. And so here's the first embellishment that could be added to that two measure open G roll pattern. Instead of playing, playing with that, uh, the thumb on the G and the ring finger, the middle finger, I'm sorry, the middle finger on the D, you could pinch. And so I'll often do this, I'll pinch, especially at the beginning of a song, I'll pinch with my index finger and my middle finger on the G and on the D, and I'll go like this. So you hear that? So I was able to add a little more punch by doing a pinch for a quarter note instead of playing the two eighth notes. But then the same pattern continues. And I, I'm able to land with my thumb back on that G string, or if I was changing chords to the C. Uh, another nice thing that can be done is, say you're moving into that C chord. Instead of just playing it open and straight the whole way, you can add a little uh, passing note to, uh, to suggest that we're moving to the next chord. So that's how, here's how that would sound. So there, we just added that little passing note, which ended up being a mixed roll. So watch, one more time. And I'll do that many times when I'm leading into a C chord. Uh, the same thing can be done, of course, if you're going to a D chord, you might do a passing note. So there's all sorts of different variations that you can do. Uh, one other last one that I want to share though is you'll hear this two to five slide on the D string all the time in bluegrass banjo. And a way that you could incorporate that slide into this two measure roll pattern is as follows. Okay, so that's basically the same two measure roll pattern. I started in the same way. But instead of hitting that open fifth string, I went to the low D string and did a two to five slide. Oops, one more time. So there's little variations that you can do and it adds that color that you're looking for. And of course, in a typical bluegrass song, we do these roll patterns, and then if there's a gap in the song, we fill it in with a lick. So in Blue Ridge Cabin Home, that could sound like this. And there's that classic Scruggs lick at the end of Blue Ridge Cabin Home there, or in the middle, while the vocalist takes a breath. So these are just some of the ideas, but I think the most important idea here is that these two measure roll patterns are incredibly helpful. And if you're trying to do one measure roll patterns, I think you're gonna find a lot of frustration and it's not going to sound quite right. Uh, you'll find yourself having to play the same thing over and over and it just doesn't 
quite work. So it would, that might sound like this. Or if we were to apply that same one measure pattern over uh, into the C and the D, it would sound like this. And it's not that there's anything wrong with that. You can use those sorts of patterns, but the two measure pattern just seems to fit a lot better and gives you a more consistent drive, especially because it allows you to continue those forward rolls. You can get four straight forward rolls and uh, four straight forward rolls before you have to exit out of it. Whereas in that other pattern, you can at most get two straight forward rolls before you have to reset. So these are just some ideas for bluegrass, banjo, backup, down the neck, and I highly encourage you to practice these and particularly practice these with the metronome. If you can't play these with the metronome, then you can't play them. So play it with the metronome. Start slow and then gradually increase the speed until you can play it perfectly at a higher speed. Good luck.